A trigger happy policeman this Tuesday shot two people in Nabweru, a suburb near Kampala, during a fracas which broke out after the victims had protested to pay ground rent. The incident comes at a time there is a spike in shootings after police issued the radical shoot to kill order to rid the country of hardcore criminals. This has elicited a heated debate, especially among civil libertarians who argue that the police is engaging in extrajudicial killings. Although the police act in penal code do not clearly spell out the circumstances under which an armed police officer can shoot at anyone, firing in self-defense is allowed. The first one would be probably verbal communication. You warn the people that I'm about to shoot all I'm going to use, a firearm, or else you surrender. Then after that, you can shoot in the air, but not direct. And uh, if you see that all those available options are failed, that's when you can shoot the person direct. But you, we usually tell people that it should be either in the air or shoot to disable. But Article 221 of the Constitution requires the police to act at all times to protect and uphold human rights. However, police published argues that whereas the police should act with restraint, there are times crowds pose a threat to security officers. Consider is that a stone is also an arm because it can kill once thrown and 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 it hits a and and it hits a strategic area, one can die. So we cannot underestimate that. The law enforcement agency must apply reasonable force. So the principle of reasonable force, reasonable to the force you are countering. Now if somebody throwing stones, you can't use a live bullet to shoot that person. According to the police spokesperson Judith Nabakova, the use of live ammunition should be the last resort to control crowds, but more often than not, some police officers are reckless. At the end of the day, if you shoot at somebody and probably they were not armed, then you have to be taken on. In Chibuli last year, a police officer shot and killed a man on allegations that he was trying to disarm her. It would be abnormal for an officer to underestimate what may happen next because I'm on lawful duty, I'm carrying my firearm, but somebody is coming to disarm me. What are the reasons for that person to come and remove the gun from me? However, a former spy chief and regional security expert, David Pulkol, differs. Oh, the military and the police are taught in martial arts. If somebody approaches you, you can only see, you can even estimate from the ducking, is coming for your gun, okay, it's coming for your, for your weapon. So you are taught even how you can kick such a person uh, and uh, even if he's pointing a gun at you, you know, how you can give such a person a sidekick uh, and how you can, uh, you know, turn around and disable that person. The evidence of such high-handed incidents are not difficult to find. The Nabuero incident showed that one person was shot in the shoulder, another one in the stomach, which violates the principle of self-defense. What we always do we investigate those cases, and once we are through with our investigations, we always take the files to the DPP. And now it is the DPP to study the evidence, eh, to study the evidence that is on the file, and they will advise us accordingly. According to experts, a police officer who is armed should always take a few steps back and warn civilians in case they turn rowdy before opening fire. It is also upon the public to respect armed cops and the army in order to avoid raising tempers that can easily result into fatal response. Sudil Biarhanga, NTV Kampala.